Hello and welcome to our first video tutorial for Pixel Magic, the photo editing application for the Apple iPad. Today we're going to show you how to make a photo look old like it was taken around the turn of the century. I've got Pixel Magic running here in the iPad simulator. So now the first thing we need to do obviously uh, we try to edit an image is load one. So I'm going to go down to the load icon here which is going to give me a selection of either select from library or select from shelf. Uh, we'll learn about the shelf later for right now. I'll just select a picture from the library. This one right here. It's this nice, old, fallen apart, rusty train, and we're going to make this look like a very, very old photo. The first thing we're going to start with is removing the color from it. And uh, to do that, we're going to go in and look at the effects that we have available. The effects icon down here gives us a selection of six different effects. The one I'm interested in is the sepia effect up here. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to get an immediate preview of what this effect actually looks like. So uh, now I'm going to tap outside of this dialog into the image which applies the effect. So that's already looking better but I'm not entirely happy with uh, the color of it. So I'm going to go down here to the filter icon which is going to pop up a list of filters that I can apply to the image. And there's quite a selection in here of different things I can do with the image. But for right now I'm really interested in the U saturation value filter up here. So I'm going to turn up the saturation a little bit. And then uh, the color is a bit too green for my taste so I'm going to move it over here see if I can shift it a little bit into the red. Maybe a little bit more on the saturation. Uh, again, a single tap into the image applies that. The next thing I think I'm going to do is try to simulate the uh, small aperture of the cameras back then. And for that I've got the Holga simulator right here. And that's going to apply a blur and a darkening effect to the uh, edges of the image. So I'm going to turn up the blur here, and uh, also turn up the darkening. There, it's a little bit too much. There we go. The next step is going to be to add a little bit of noise to the image to uh, simulate a film grain. And to do that, I'm going back into the filters. I'm going to select the noise filter. Just turn up the strength a little bit. Not too much. I uh, really just want to simulate some film grain here, so this is going to be a pretty subtle effect. The next thing I want to do is apply the glow filter, and what that's going to do is uh, it's going to kind of blow out the highlights a little bit and exaggerate the bright parts of the image. You can see up here in the corner, with every filter that you use, the uh, histogram will come up which comes in really handy because you can see immediately what this is going to do to, to the color distribution in your image. So I'm going to increase the strength a little bit here. I just want to kind of cut off the very top of the histogram, make it a little softer. There. Again, uh, tap into the image to apply the filter. So that's already starting to look like a, an old photo. I'm actually going to run the uh, Holga simulator again now because the uh, noise and the glow filter have kind of reduced those effects. There we go. A little more blur. That's good. I'm going to apply that. And I think what I want to do next is uh, simulate a little bit of a surface defect on the image, kind of uh, flaking off of the coating and uh, certain flaws in the development process back then. But first I'm going to save the uh, save icon down here so I can save to the library or the shelf. I'm going to save to the shelf now. The shelf is kind of like a uh, temporary storage. You remember that from the loading earlier. Let's go into it again. Now I've got a, uh, an autosave slot over here and I've got six slots over here that I can save my work in progress to without having to worry about cluttering up my library. So now Let's try and get some uh, surface defects onto this uh, image. And the way I'm going to do that is uh, to use the smudge tool. I'm going to go down to the uh, tools menu here. It's going to bring up a list of tools. And I'm going to select the uh, smudge tool, which is going to open the brush preferences. And in this dialog, I can set the uh, parameters for the brush I'm uh, painting with. I've got a nice preview up here on 
when I adjust the size, you're going to be able to see what the tool does in an act section from an actual image. And then I've got a range of brushes. There's a simple circular brush and a variety of different image brushes, which I can select one from. I'm kind of going to scroll over here because the one I'm looking for is this one. It's kind of scattered splats, uh, which is going to per be perfect for this purpose. Now I'll adjust the size a little bit. And I'm also going to turn on auto rotation. And what that does is it will make the rotation of the brush follow my painting strokes. Uh, we'll learn a little bit more about that in a different tutorial. So I'm going to tap outside to start painting and just kind of drag. The uh, smudge tool essentially just smears uh, from where I start painting into the parts I drag into. But that's actually a little stronger than I wanted it, so I'm going to go back into my uh, brush parameters and turn down the opacity a little bit. Alright, so now I'm going to uh, speed up time a little bit, so you won't have to watch me paint for a minute and a half. There we go, now I'm done. So I think the next thing would be uh, to kind of simulate some faded and bleached spots and uh, similar defects in the image, so I'm going to use the dodge brush down here. That's just going to selectively uh, lighten some parts of the image. I'm going to adjust my size here and pick a different brush to work with. There's uh, a lot of brushes in here, there's kind of one for every purpose. But the one I'm really looking for is over here. It's this one, it's kind of uh, chalky looking, which is uh, pretty good for this purpose. And I'm also going to turn down the opacity a lot, because I want this effect to be a little more subtle. So now I can start uh, painting with that. And you can see it kind of bleaches and lightens up parts of the image. And again, I'm going to speed up time. And I'm done. So uh, now I'm going to save again. I'm going to save it to the shelf one more time. So that's looking pretty good. I think I just want to put some uh, final touches on it. And uh, what I'm going to use to do that is the adjustments menu down here. And there's a lot of things I can do with that. That's almost kind of a one-stop shop for adjustments if you don't have to do any major editing. One of the things I can do is adjust the levels directly on the histogram, which is really nice because you can immediately see when you're starting to uh, cut off the top of the histogram or the bottom. So I just want to pull that over a little bit here and then bring up the midtones. And I think I want to reduce the contrast a little bit. That's not bad. Let's, let's see, uh, maybe if I turn down the saturation a little more. No, that's no good. Let's leave it like this, and uh, I'm going to kind of experiment and see what uh, the sharpness does to this image. Uh, no, that doesn't really work either. Uh, what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to uh, increase the denoise a little bit, and uh, that's going to kind of take all of the individual edits with uh, tools and brushes that I've made and the noise I've added and kind of blend it all together a little better. Turn it into more of a grainy look. Alright, again tap outside of the dialog to apply and we're done. We've turned a uh, beautiful, crisp, colorful, saturated photo into an old, damaged photograph from the turn of the century. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.